Oh, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another lesson. In today's video, I'm going to explain and break down the ES6 map function. Why it is incredibly powerful and why you're going to need it in libraries such as React. I'm going to break it all down. Let's jump into it. So before we jump into this video, a quick word from our friends over at Skillshare. If you enjoy my videos and you want more free courses, then check this out. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions of people come together to take the next step in their creative journey. The thing I love about Skillshare is that there are no ads. They're always launching new premium classes and they also recommend really interesting classes. So before you know it, I'm actually no longer watching TV or Netflix. All I do is watch Skillshare while I'm actually eating my food. Most classes are under 60 minutes, so they should be able to fit any schedule, whether you're super busy or you've got a little bit more time on your hands. I've actually gone ahead and dropped the React Basics 101 one entire class on Skillshare. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description are going to get a free month worth of premium Skillshare and you're going to be able to with that access the React Basics which I've uploaded. On top of that you're going to get access to thousands and thousands of courses available on Skillshare's platform. I've actually been checking out a amazing video editing class at the moment by Ali Abdel where I was actually able to find out how I could use my iPad to add animated handwriting in into my videos to level up my production value. And now I'm making the best use out of my iPad as well as leveling up my Final Cut production game. So this is just an example of the amazing value that I've got since I've signed up at Skillshare. And if you guys want to go ahead and benefit from this just like I have, then go ahead and remember the first 1000 people to go ahead and grab that link are gonna get one free month of Skillshare premium, which means that you can access my React Basics 101 class. It's completely free, you have nothing to lose. and then after that you can go ahead and continue if you're enjoying what you see on Skillshare. So the map method actually creates a new array which is populated from the results of the calling function. So essentially what's happening here is you'll call the map function on an array, it will loop through each item in that array and every single time it does that it returns a value from your map function. So you can choose to return a different value each time. For example imagine we had an array of numbers and we want to double each number every single time you iterate through it you can return the number that we're looping through doubled as a result back and then it's going to bubble up an array and return that new array to us so let's jump into some examples so that way you can practice this and go ahead and get this nailed down for yourself so diving into some important points right now so firstly the syntax for the map function is very similar to what we've seen before it's very similar to the filter find for each and so forth and as you can see we as we look loop through we have each individual element that can be named contextually as we're going to see in a few examples the second argument is the index so the index out is which point at which we're looping through the item in the array and the third argument is the actual array itself if you ever have to go ahead and reference the entire array and as you can see here we have to return a value each time we loop through and this is a crucial part of a map and it actually separates it from the for each loop it actually returns a value each time so some important points to remember about using a map so a map creates a new array from calling a function from every single array element. So every time we loop through it, it's going to go ahead and return a value. Those values form a new array that we use. So the map method calls a new function for each element in the array. It's worth mentioning that it doesn't execute the map function if there is no array elements and also it will not change the original array so you don't have to worry about accidentally breaking your original or changing your original array it doesn't affect it so when should you not use a map function you shouldn't be using a map if you're not going to use the array that it returns or if you're not even returning a value each time you loop through. So if you want to go through each item in your array and you're not actually returning any value each time or you don't care about the array that it's going to essentially create, then you're better off using a for each loop. If you use a map and you're not actually returning anything, it's anti-pattern. You don't want to do that. Okay, You want to use a for each if you don't actually need the array that it returns. If you need the array that it returns, you need to use a map so let's dive into some examples so everything i'm saying will make a lot more sense hopping into the first example we're going to go ahead and call the function on each item in the array so let's take our number array right here for example what we want to do is we essentially want to double each of these numbers inside of our array so you could do a for loop and go ahead and change each number create a new 
array and that kind of thing but that's a bit tedious right we don't want to have to push new values into an array we want to use our new fancy map function so in this case i'm going to go ahead and create a double array variable and i'm going to call the number array map function so here you can see we've got a callback function and as you can see we are going ahead and returning the number which we're looping through so number item in this case is what we've decided to call it and we're timesing it by two and as you can see what this does is it loops through each item in our array and it returns the number times by two so this will become four and it will loop onto the next value this will become six and so forth and what it's doing every time is it's adding that to a new array and that new array gets stored in double array so if we want to go ahead and inspect this as you can see the outcome is double each value so the way I like to see this is essentially you're mapping each value to its new value. So in this case, we've got two goes to four, three goes to six, uh, four goes to eight and so forth. Okay, so this is one primary example of how we can do this. Now we can actually simplify that and clean up that previous example with using some ES6. And you can go ahead and see here we've gone ahead and made a function from what we actually passed in as the callback functions. In this case, a number item, and we're simply returning. So this is an implicit return, hence there's no curly brackets. We've got an arrow function here, which is saying, take our number item and just return the basically doubled number, so times it by two. We have our original array that we had previously, so same thing over here. And what we're doing here, is we're going ahead and we're doing number a dot map and we're passing in our callback function right now you can do this in line just like this which is quite clean as well i i tend to prefer to do it this way so we'll have number a dot map and then for every number i want to do n times two and we're returning that value so what this will do is it will bubble up and as you can see irrelevant if we use double array or double array two you can see we get the same outcome so that's actually how you want to be doing it in the more modern approach in your syntax. Now hopping over to example number two. What if we have a string? We want to go ahead and loop through all the different characters. And then I want to do something funky to those characters. So in this case, let's take the scenario of I want to double each letter and then go ahead and create an array from those values. And then I want to rejoin it together, right? So in this case, we've got a name variable. In this case, I've assigned it Sunny. The second thing I want to do is I'm going to use this call split string function. Now, what this does is, is it actually goes ahead and splits. In this case, I passed in a separator of an empty value. So this will actually go ahead and essentially break apart my string and create an array from that value. So if I was to go ahead and show you what's inside of the name array, you can see it's now separated our string into a array of each value. So what I can now do is I can go ahead and map through this as we've got this. So so in this case, I can actually change this to name array and we can map through this value. And for each individual letter, I'm just going to go ahead and do some string interpolation and I'm just going to double each letter. And as you can see, I can go ahead and really change this up to however I want it. But as you can see now, I'm just doubling each letter and this goes ahead and returns a new name array. Right? So in this case, what it's then going ahead and doing is it's returning a new name array. Right, so as you can see, each individual item has now got double letters. And then if you want to go ahead and join it up again, there's a handy function here, which is called a join, which works on arrays. And you can go ahead and choose your separate. In this case, we separated initially with this. So we're going to rejoin with this. And we have gone ahead and manipulated our string as so. Handy little thing you can do with using the map. As you can see, there's different use cases you're going to need. I like to show you all your tools in your toolkit so you can go ahead and build out what you need to build to solve your problems. Hopping over to number three, rendering lists in JavaScript libraries. Now, this is probably one of the most important use cases. Now, I'm going to show you an example of an app here, right? So here we have a Next.js app. And as you can see, as a map returns an array of values, we can use this whenever we need to go ahead and return some JSX to our React. So in this case, imagine we had a list of names as you see right here. Here. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. We have Sunny, J, Elon, Jeff, and Bill. Now imagine I want to go ahead and render these on the screen. If I did a for each loop and I went ahead and tried to do what I've done here, it won't return a array of values afterwards, which in which case nothing will be shown on the screen. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and try and demonstrate this as clear as I can. So as you can see on the right hand side, we've got the outcome. So here we've got the zero number zero name in the list is Sunny and so forth. And all we've done here, guys, is we've we're basically mapping through in 
online in some JSX code and I've got the name and I've got the index. Remember the second argument is the index, the third is the array. And then we've gone ahead and we've listed out list items, passing each key in as in React, we like to do that to keep things optimal. And as you can see, I'm just going ahead and popping out the R index and the name as we need it. Now, if I was to change this to a four each, I wanna demonstrate here that you're not gonna see anything being returned on the screen. And React is gonna scream at you because it's not gonna actually return anything, okay? So as you can see, type void is not assignable. That's because it's not returning anything in this case. But if we use a map, you can see there's a big difference because we're returning a value each time. In this case, it's an array of list JSX elements. And then that gets put on the screen in the form as, as we see here. So this is why a map is crucial when you're using libraries such as React. Now, our fourth example is probably one which I think you're gonna use a lot more than you might think. This is where we need to reformat array objects. Now, you might be wondering, Sonny, where am I actually gonna use that? Imagine we have some API response from an external URL and I get that data in and I need to change that data and I need to use it in my front end in a different shaped object. Or it could be the other way. I might have some data inside of my app and I wanna push it to an external API and that API expects it in a specific format. In which case we can go ahead and do the following. So imagine we had a, an array of name objects. In this case, we've got each individual object here. We've got the, the person that say has a name of Sunny and likes coding, right? This one name Jay likes gaming, name Elon likes Tesla, right? So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and map through each item. And what I'm going to do here is reshape the item that we're going to return. Starting things off, we have a container, which is going to be an empty object. And then what I'm doing is I'm showing you two different ways as to how we can assign a value to an object. So in this case, what I've done is I'm accessing container and I'm changing the item dot name as the key. So in this case, I'm, uh, the key would be sunny and the value in this case would be item dot likes. So as you can see here, the key, the new one as after we log it out is going to be sunny and the likes is now going to be the value so sunny coding j gaming elon tesla and then i've added a new one by using the dot notation so you can use either this or you can use this so in this case if i was to rewrite this uh, uh, in the above you can actually go ahead and put a string and just do it like that that's the same effect okay so you can either use a dynamic value like so or you can use a dot notation string values. So in this case, we've got contain the number of letters in the name. And I'm simply just taking the number of letters in the name and adding that as a second key value pair. So in this case, number of letters in Sunny's name is five. Uh, J is three. Elon is four. Now you see we've reshaped our data. Whatever reason you may want to do this, as I mentioned earlier in our previous example, you may want to do it for several reasons. Do not underestimate the power of reshaping array objects in this way. Now this can be cleaned up a hell of a lot using ES6. I'm gonna show you how we can do that in a one line fashion. So let's take this right here. And as we're returning an object, right? What I could actually do here is I'm gonna move this for reference so I can kind of keep that in my head. Uh, and then what I'm gonna do is here, when we're doing a return, I can now basically get rid of the following, okay? I want to return in parentheses an object, so in this case, an object. So I'm gonna pop in my object here. And my object is gonna have the following shape. So the first thing was, it's gonna be a container. And then the, the value for this was gonna be item likes. The second is gonna be, oh, in this case, we sorry, we don't need this. It can be item name and we can do item likes. And then the second one is gonna be container, uh, number of letters in name. So in this case, as we're directly referencing the object, we don't need to put container. And we, here we can say item.name.length. And just like that, guys, we can go ahead and do a clean one liner. Now I'm gonna go ahead and format this code so that way it can be super clean. And as you can see now, this is called an implicit return. It's more of an ES6 modern approach to how we can restructure. And you can tell that this is the syntax of an implicit return based on the starting parentheses followed by the object. That means we're returning an object and this is the shape of the object. And as you can see here, that's the shape. So try and get really comfortable with doing this and you're gonna find that this is gonna be a superpower inside of your JavaScript arsenal. So another example, a very simple example here. Let's take our array of numbers 
and we want to go ahead and get the root of each number and then we're going to have that in a new array so in this case we map through each individual number we're going to do math dot square root and we're going to go ahead and pass in the original number so in this case number one is going to be the same it's that's the square root of one is one square root of four is two square root of nine is three so you can see it's very handy for mathematics very handy for transformations very handy for react libraries the map function is massively powerful in your javascript tool set you need to be comfortable with it and the final example again i'm going to show you one more for reformatting as it is a very powerful thing to be doing is imagine in this case where we have a player array so we've got three different players with their scores and i want to go ahead and restructure it to a structure like this where you've just got the person's name with their score right so imagine an api expected the data to come in like that how do we do that right so in this case what we can now do is we can go ahead and firstly look at this. This is our first example here. We've got the reformatted array. We're mapping through each of the players. And we're saying for every single player, remember implicit return. So this is determined by the parentheses followed by an object. And essentially this just means that we're returning an object of this shape. And the shape is saying that the dynamic key would be player.name. And notice how if I was to get rid of this, it would start erroring. So every time you want to access an attribute such as this, you need to put in square brackets four keys. Okay. So in this case, we're doing the player.name. So in this case, Andy, Bob, and Charlie will be the new key. So this will get replaced with Andy, Bob, Charlie. And then the player score, the appropriate player would go ahead and get assigned. Now, if I was to go ahead and show this out, so we've gone ahead and console log this here, you can see Andy, Bob, Charlie comes out. Now we can make this even cleaner with the help of some ES6. So I'm going to go ahead and show you. If we do ES6 destructuring, I've just got a second same uh, variable name here, but I've just named it number two. We're going to do the same thing. But what I'm doing here is I'm splitting up. You see where we're doing player.name, player.score. What I'm doing now is destructuring the object. So notice how we've got the same parentheses here. And all I've essentially done here is where we had player before, I'm putting square brackets and think of this as we're breaking into the object, okay? And I'm getting out the name and the score of that object. Now, this allows me to go ahead and directly reference those variables without having to say player dot, player dot, and so forth. So now it's a very cleaner architecture. Now, when you see this, you can actually do uh, object destructuring as well as array destructuring. So two things I highly recommend reading up on if this is new to you, right? So this is a new, more modern way of doing it. And as you can see, the logs of both of the reformatted arrays are actually coming out the exact same. So we've got Andy, Bob, Charlie, Andy, Bob, Charlie with the correct appropriate scores no matter which way we do it so this has been your introduction to the map function as i mentioned before make sure you're using the map function in the correct places so you want to make use of that array that's being returned and you want to make sure that each time it iterates through your array it's actually returning something from your callback function if you're not doing this and you're not returning anything or you don't need the information then just use a for each right it's anti-pattern if you're using a map when you're not making use of that returned array remember if you're using something like react you're gonna want to use a map so that way you can get your jsx elements actually shown on the screen i've seen it far too many times where students will go ahead and use a for each and be completely surprised when they're not seeing anything on the screen it's because they're not using a map they were using a for each so i hope you've enjoyed this session if you have let me know down in the comments below and i will see you in the next video peace <laughs>